Well, hello there, motherfuckers. And I am here with an album review. And uh, I want to talk about a band that some people saw I was wearing the, sh or, um, the shirt in like a couple of my wrestling reviews and other types of like um, reviews on this channel. And uh, I want to talk about that band right now. That's Goat Whore right there, A Haunting Curse. Now, for people who don't know about this band, it's, you know, I'm not really too surprised. It's not a massive band, but they have gained some headway. They have quite a discography out already. Um, about six or so albums, I believe. Uh, I'm not really too sure on the exact number, but I want to talk about A Haunting Curse. Now, uh, I bought this album. Um, but when I went to the uh, Slaughter Fest in New York City, um, in Brooklyn, and uh, we saw Goat Whore, you know, and, and they weren't even really that high up as, you know, it was a death metal festival. You had Dying Fetus there, you had um, Morbid Angel, they were the headliners. You have Fallujah down, at, like, all the way down at the bottom almost, maybe like the third fourth band to go on, and Goat Whore, well, they were right there before the headliners, um, oh yeah, and you had the Faceless, which really fucking sucks, hate that fucking band, it's a, it's a fucking mockery of, of, uh, death metal, death core, whatever you want to call it, that's a fucking horrible ass band, motherfuckers, anyway, um, Goat Whore, now this is like, I consider them to be sort of like the Metallica of death metal, uh, they're just great riff makers. I mean, they just do things with octaves and power chords. And, you know, they never really do anything too overly complicated. They're not, like, super technical. They're not, like, crazy fucking technical um, fucking death metal masters like, say, Fallujah or something like that. No, sir, nothing like that at all. But, um, go whore. Now, I have a haunting curse right here. And this is maybe, in my opinion, one of the, um... The heaviest albums. I think actually Go Whore has, he has eased up over the years. And, you know, maybe they're a better band for it in a way. They've kind of traded in the really, really heavy, heavy death metal for more of a thrashy death metal hybrid. And you could see that more on their, you know, their later albums that, you know, and including the one that was just released this year, their, two four, um, their 2014 release. Uh, you could definitely see how, you know, songs like, um, you know, uh, like, um, FPS, uh, how they change their style a bit. It's not really the same type of shit like this. I mean, this fucking shit looks like you're about to be embalmed on the table. This is like very, very, oh, they still haven't lost it. They're Illuminati type of sacrificial type of gimmick here with Gohor, obviously, you know, Illuminati all over it and everything. That's the rack. That's the gig right there. Um, and they really, really have, um, like change over the years. And I want to talk a little bit about this album, A Haunting Curse. This is the one where I'm like, this is the big time sacrificial type of shit with the Illuminati and everything. And it's a really interesting album. And, you know, if you compare their later releases to an album like this, you know, you'll really see how much they kind of change. Some people might use the word mature, but I've never really been a big fan of the word mature. I mean, what does that mean? That they were immature before because they wanted to do a different style of music? Not really a big fan of that. A lot of times people use the word mature to be a synonym for sellout, you know, and I, I don't think that if a band changes their style and wants to experiment, becomes something different and grow, that doesn't make them a sellout. That just makes them humans. You know, if they want to fucking try something different. You know, a lot of people think, you know, they're just about to fucking throw out all their albums, delete all their downloads from them, just because a band wants to change their fucking style. I say, grow the fuck up. But, you know, still, you look back at an album like this, and right from the start, where are these, <laughs> where are these scars of testimony? Uh, this album starts off with a fucking kick. I mean, there are multiple riffs... And, uh, and just multiple acts of craziness almost on every single fucking track. Now, of course, the one song that everybody knows from this album uh, is Alchemy of the Black Sun Cult. That's probably the most recognizable riff. It's actually probably one of the softer songs of the album. And the funny thing is, it's not even a fucking soft song. I'm saying it's the softest 
with it still being pretty fucking heavy, still blowing almost every fucking death metal band out of the fucking water, um, with these tracks, I mean, these, I can't stress how fucking heavy this album is, I mean, like I said, you know, I, I don't diss Slipknot, I love Slipknot, but for the folks that say Slipknot is the heaviest thing under the sun, I, I laugh at them, I, I do, It's and it's crazy, usually these are Slipknot haters, I'm a Slipknot fan, I you know people that say, um, oh, this is the heaviest shit I've ever fucking heard, you know, it's 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 just not fact. <laughs> that means you haven't heard shit like this, you know. Like, like this is the thing. I'm I, I'm standing before you. I'm actually you know gonna tell you, fucking go listen to this. I'd let you listen here, but they'd fucking put copyright shits all over this fucking video. I'd love to give you examples. I mean, just go on YouTube, type their names in, type in Alchemy of the Black Sun Cult, type in Where Are These Scars of Testimony, type in any of these fucking songs all over this fucking album. I mean, just look in the, listen to the fucking names of the fucking songs. Bloodletting Upon the Cloven Hoof, I mean, come the fuck on. My eyes are the, are the spears of chaos and the narrow confines of defilement for a consumed oblivion. I mean, come on. You just fucking hear the names of the tracks and you don't even have to hear the fucking songs and you know it's fucking heavier. Like I said, this is like fucking, I, I listen to this album I, I, and I picture somebody being fucking embalmed, somebody fucking impaled by a spear, it's like getting kicked in the fucking face repeatedly. It's like fucking Randy Orton punting you in the fucking head. It, it, it's like all that shit happening at once, it's like uh, two fucking rednecks with shotguns on both sides of your head about to blow your fucking brains out. But before they can fucking blow your brains out, somebody's standing there with a fucking spear and they charge at you, impaling you in the face and as you're impaling the face, both fucking rednecks with the shotguns on both sides of your head and pull the fucking trigger and your fucking head is fucking jelly it's nothing it's not an existent and then as they're doing that a fucking tree falls and just fucking crushes everybody holy fucking shit this album is fucking awesome yeah so it's probably one of the fucking heaviest things I've ever heard in my whole fucking life it's it, it, it's it's fucking crazy motherfuckers it's one of the fucking heaviest fucking things and it's a work of fucking art I mean, it really is fucking heavy. I mean, it is sort of like fucking, um, in the car here, so I have a couple of CDs. It's kind of like Fallujah. Like, this is fucking heavy, but this is more artsy-fartsy shit, you know? It's it, it's kind of more beautiful, I could say, in its own, you know, its own style. It's, it's more, like, beautiful. They try to do, like, a Mona Lisa of death metal. You know, it's more pretty and shit, but this is dirty! It's dirty, but it doesn't make you feel that filthy because it really makes you witness like a really like uh, good talented band really trying to pump out some good fucking tracks. Um, and as I said, like they're very metallicish in their death metal approach, just going for songs that are just the riffs are catchy. You know, without like you know toning it down to the point where it's like fucking poppy. No. It, it's not like that. It's not like Metallica. You know, like I said, I could see the complaints on an album like the Black Album for Metallica. And here we go again. We're once again talking about Metallica and people talking about selling out. But, you know, it, it is related. I could see why people might say that because of the, you know, the, the more co poppy choruses. There's no fucking poppy choruses in this fucking shit. There's, um, there's nothing like that at all. There's, there, there isn't any fucking choruses in this fucking album, no, there's no fucking choruses, it's fucking straight ahead, fucking crazy fucking shit, you know what I mean, it's sort of like we're talking about Fallujah, there ain't no fucking choruses, there ain't shit like that, and you know, that that's something that I could get behind with death metal, it changes the approach of, that's why it's not like anything else, that's why it's probably hard for a lot of people to get into, that's why a lot of my friends that listen to metal, they simply can't listen to death metal. Why? Because it's so fucking different. It really is. It's fucking miles ahead or, you know, behind, depending on where you look at it, you know, on the, you know, compared to other styles of metal. I mean, that, that, that shit is just, it's way, way, way fucking different than, say, you know, Albums like Slipknot, you know, like Slipknot, there's choruses even on the heavier songs. They still have choruses. You can still sing along to it. This shit, you know, it's like you, you fucking can't. 
you 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 really really can't uh, fucking sing along to this. No, no, no. But this is more for headbanging. This is seriously one of the most headbangingest albums out there. Well, I don't know how much more I could really say about it. It's a really great album. And if you really haven't given Goat Horde a chance, I'd say, um, well, I don't know what, I, I really, you know, start from the beginning of this discography, maybe. It, it really depends. But I would say actually maybe start backwards. You know, it's an interesting way of like, you know, because they've really lightened up their style without being too light. And, and, and you can just see, like, it'll just get heavier and heavier. They were getting further and further away from the heaviness. That's the, that, that's the thing about them. It's really, it's really interesting. A lot of ba albums, uh, bands go heavier and heavier. Um, you know, they're sort of like in flames. You know, they've lightened up their style. They've adjusted, you know, um... You know, of course, let's not get started with In Flames. That, I could do a whole fucking video on that, and maybe I will if, if you know, if, if people want to hear it about, you know, In Flames. And, you know, that's another band where I ain't going to fucking diss them because I like them. They're another band that just experimented and wants to change their style, and they're pretty successful with that style change, to say the very least. Um, all right, motherfuckers, different, uh, definite um, recommendation for this album. It's an, you know, it's an older album already. When this shit come out... 2006, you know, so give it a listen, um, you know, if, if you're into death metal already and you haven't heard of Goat Horror, I'm very, very fucking surprised, I don't know what you're doing, I don't know um, why you haven't heard of them, but you really should, uh, yeah, so definite recommendation for this album, um, there you go, motherfuckers, ha. <laughs>